So everybody, as more and more iOS and iPadOS iterations are released and we're getting closer to iPadOS and iOS 18, there's always those headlining features like things like Math Notes or Apple Intelligence or again, a bunch of other features that Apple really touts and advertises. But under the hood, there's a bunch of different features that have kind of accumulated and gotten better and better over the years. So in this video, what I wanna do is talk about 10 features that go kind of under the radar and unnoticed that has really helped me from a productivity standpoint and also just from an overall usability standpoint on my iPhone as well as my iPad. So let's talk about these 10 features. But before we get started, definitely consider subscribing to the channel if you guys wanna watch more videos like this one or becoming a channel member to get some awesome wallpapers as well as some other nice perks like a live podcast episode and much more. But let's get into this video and talk about these 10 features and leave comments below if you guys know these or if you learned something new. Let's get into it. So everybody, let's hop right into this video. And before we get started, I do wanna mention, and you might notice that I am running iOS 18 right now, but I will say that all the features I wanna mention are not exclusive to iOS 18. You can be on iOS 17 or iPadOS 17 and they'll work just fine. So I wanted to be as inclusive as possible with these awesome tips and tricks. The first one I'm gonna bring up is text replacement. So you may or may not know, but this has been around for a long time now. So if I press the notes application and I press enter, enter, and then I type in the at symbol twice, I actually created a shortcut that will actually suggest and autocorrect it to be my email. So I no longer have to type out my email every single time. And it's actually very easy to do this and this has worked wonders and saved me so much time. I used to spend so much time kind of writing out my email for some reason and also as well as my address. But if you go into your settings, then go into the general and then scroll down to where it says keyboard, you can actually go to text replacement. So this is how you actually do this and it's very, very easy. If I press the plus sign right here, let's say I wanna do something else. Let's say I want the phrase to be Hello, what's up? And if I just type HH as a shortcut, I'll press save. So now every single time I type in HH, it'll show up as a suggestion to type in hello, what's up? So you don't have to actually go out of your way to type out the entire thing. I know we live in a lazy moment right now, but I absolutely love this. So definitely try this one out if you haven't already. So the next one is actually gonna be screenshot annotations. Now we all know that to take a screenshot, you do one of these, so you do the up arrow and the lock button, and then you have the ability to edit it in real time. Now this works a little bit better, obviously on the iPad, because you have the ability to use something like an Apple Pencil, but it works the same exact way on your iPhone when you take a screenshot. And what I like about this is that when you annotate, there are some predetermined shapes as well as symbols that if you draw them out and you draw, let's say an ugly circle, if I hold it down, it'll turn it into a perfect oval, right? And this works with a bunch of different ones. And I'm gonna list them all to the side, but let's try out a few here. So the, another one I'm gonna do is maybe an arrow. So if I do this and do an arrow, it'll actually point to that. Another one is a star. So if you do a star, it'll then fix that star for you and be able to actually change it perfectly. It actually even does like pentagons and hexagons. So if I do one of these, it'll fix that. Turned it into a circle, so it got a little bit confused. Another one is actually a cloud. So if I do one of these, it'll actually turn it into a nice little like cartoony cloud, but it has a bunch of other ones, like I mentioned, like a triangle, a square, a rectangle, a pentagon, an arrow, parabola. So the list goes on and on. Definitely try out some shapes, leave some comments down below what you were able to try and find out, but this is a great one if you do want to play with it in your screenshots. And again, it works pretty much anywhere that you can annotate or anywhere that you can actually use the tools down here. The next feature is going to be guided access. And what this does is that, let's say you're in an application right here and you want to leave the person in the application. This is actually a perfect situation for if you have a child or something like that. But if I triple press the lock button, so one, two, three, you get a little menu and the guided access basically locks you into that application. You can circle areas of the screen you would like to disable as well. So if I don't want them to press the get button or anything like that, I can circle that. It's going to disable that button. We're going to press options here to see exactly what we're dealing with. So you can even kind of make sure and disable different buttons and physical hardware buttons. So the side button, the volume buttons, motion, software, keyboard, touch, time limit. You can press done on there to set what you want to set. We're going to press start, put a passcode in, and now you get this little prompt, the guided access has started and you cannot leave it. So you can move around, you can do anything you want in this application. As you can see, this little button is not available to press, or at least this area is, and if I move it down, I can actually press get right there, which I'm not gonna do. So I like this, again, if you have a child and you wanna give them your phone for five, 10 minutes, but you don't want them kind of wandering off into places they shouldn't, then this is a great way to do it. And to get out of it, you triple press it again, or press guided access, it'll go back, you type in the passcode, we'll press end, and then you're back to guided access being ended, and you can navigate your phone once again. So a great way to be able to kind of keep one person in a single application locked in without having to worry about them leaving and going somewhere else. Another big one, especially for me, when you're using your phone at night, I've noticed that the brightness levels, and again, it's gonna be tough to show it here because it is very bright in this room, but when you turn the brightness level all the way down, if you're in a pitch black room, 
it's actually not dark enough. I feel like it's still too bright, especially if you're using an application that has like a white background. So if I go into Twitter and it does have that white background, it'll actually be very, very bright. So one thing to kind of combat this, which is something I learned very recently and has been working wonders, is to reduce the white balance. Now to do this, you can do this twofold. You can just type into your search bar, type in white balance, and you can reduce the white point right there and turn that on. And if I tap that, it actually, as you can see, it got a little bit darker. Now to access this, all you have to do is go into your settings, go into accessibility, go down to where it says display and text size, and then you're gonna wanna go down here where it says reduce white points. So if you tap on that, as you can see, it got much, much darker. And then if I do one of these, and actually this is at full brightness, if I lower the brightness all the way, now this is like pitch black, I don't even know if I can see it. I could barely see that actually, good thing I was able to see that. And you turn that back off and now it's very bright. So I think this is gonna be awesome. I use my phone in very dark environments, you know, putting my daughter to bed in pitch black environments or things of that nature where the brightness is still too bright even at its lowest setting. Definitely try that out if you are in that same scenario. Now, another really cool one is that you have the ability to actually mirror your Apple Watch, which is one of the cooler things. Again, I don't really know what the situation or use case is, but I want to show off that you can actually do that. So if I go into accessibility, scroll down, you can actually see the Apple Watch mirroring. So if I tap on that, we'll toggle that on. And if I'm right here, it usually takes a second or two, so you got to give it a minute and it'll eventually actually turn on. So there you can see that it's on. I'm gonna remove my Apple Watch so we can actually see it side by side and even down to the actual locking. So of course my Apple Watch is locked once I take it off my wrist and you can actually control your Apple Watch not only from your phone, but then you're also able to control the Apple Watch from the phone itself. Sometimes it doesn't work, it's a little bit glitchy. So if I X out of here and turn on the Apple Watch mirroring again, I'll let it do its thing. It's actually resetting. As you can see, you have the blue outline right there. We'll type in the passcode and you can see that I can actually use my phone to control my Apple Watch. You can see the little blue outline right there. I think this is one of the cooler features. Again, I don't really know what the perfect use case for this would be, but as you can see, it does work in real time. It's a little bit smoother when you look at it over here versus trying to control it over here. So again, it's trying to mimic different kind of scroll wheels and things like that. But overall, big, big fan of being able to do this with your Apple Watch on your iPhone. Now, another one I wanna bring up, you might've noticed when I triple tapped over here to get to guided access, there's a couple other options. So you have background sounds, magnifier, and live speech. These are all things that you can access with this triple accessibility shortcut. So if I tap on background sounds, you can start to hear that it is playing a background ocean sound, which can then be controlled through the control center if I long press on here, tap on here, and then you have all these different options. So one way to access that is through the guided access. Another one that comes up is the magnifier. So of course, exactly what it sounds like, it is a magnifier that if I kind of, you can use it to then zoom in and zoom out. So it works as intended. It's another nice little trick that you can use as a tool inside of your phone that's kind of in a shortcut capacity. And then in that same light, when it comes to actual tools that your iPhone can actually mimic, if you've never used the Measure app, it's been my actual leveler since the very beginning. So first and foremost, you can use it as a ruler. It really isn't as accurate as something like an actual ruler. You pretty much just pinpoint here, you move it around, you press it like that, and then this is saying that it's about an inch and a half. But what I personally use this for more is going to be for the leveler because there is a gyroscope in here and an accelerometer, meaning that it's gonna be able to mimic in an actual level. And not only does it mimic the level, but it mimics it perfectly. So you can see we are on a level ground. If I tilt it this way, it'll change. This way it'll change again. And as you can see, it kind of moves around and you can even predetermine it. So if you want this to be your level spot, you just tap on here and then that is your level. And then this is now minus 17. So a bunch of different ways that you can use this if you're hanging a TV or a frame or whatever the case may be, a beautiful tool to have. And you just long press again and now you're level again. And I will say that when you are calibrating it, it will uncalibrate itself, or I guess recalibrate to normal every time you exit the app. The next tip I wanna bring up is in Safari. So if you go into your actual tabs over here, as you can see, I have over 115 tabs. And for me, I'm one of those people that kind of leaves the tabs to continue to grow until it gets to around four or 500. But if you actually long press on your tabs, you get a bunch of different options. You have the ability to close that tab, but then also close other tabs as well. So if you wanna clear all, all your tabs besides the one, you just press close all other tabs. And as you can see, all the tabs are now gone, a way to kind of clear out your, your cache in Safari. Now this next one is gonna be in the Notes app and pretty much can be used anywhere where you are dealing with text. First and foremost, if you tap anywhere on the actual screen and you're typing something out, you can use a magnifier like this as we've had for years to kind of figure out where you're going. But if you long press the space bar, it turns your whole keyboard into an actual cursor and it lets you pinpoint it way better in my opinion than something like the magnifier. So I'm right there, I'm good to go. I can kind of tap on the on, delete, delete, delete. And then the final little trick is going to be a shortcut for your kind of text formatting tool. So if you grab three fingers, tap on here, you get a little menu right here that says undo, cut, copy, paste, and redo. So if I undo, it'll actually bring everything back. If I redo, it'll delete everything again. And of course you can copy and paste everything 
And this works across everything. So it's not just the notes app and it's not just text apps. It'll work across pretty much anything. And of course, most of these features will work on your iPad as well. As long as you're running, I believe iOS like 15 or newer, most of these will be available. So definitely give them a shot, everybody. Let's finish up this video. So that will just about do for this video. Like you saw, again, these are kind of all over the place in terms of what their functions are, what they can do, how they help you, why you would use them. And a lot of people are using these for different reasons. Like my two favorite out of these 10 have to be the shortcut for the text replacement because that has saved me so much time. It's absolutely unbelievable with my email and my address. And then secondly, the guided access feature has been great, especially now that I am a parent and I have a toddler and kind of wants to grab my phone, but I don't want her going all over the place. So I kind of just lock her into that one application to let her play with it for maybe 10, 15 minutes. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. Let me know in the comment down below if you learned anything new. Are you gonna implement any of these? Are there some that maybe went overlooked that I should kind of take a look at and maybe do another version of this video let me know because there's so many more applications so many more features and so many more hidden like nuances in ios and ipad os that i think we should definitely go over but until next time everybody if you guys want to watch more videos like this one this video right here youtube thinks you're gonna like but this video i think you're gonna like until next time everybody i'm fernando peace